Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. We're going to continue working on our CloudKit to-do list application. The next task that we want to do is to make sure that we can display some sort of a checkboxes over here so we can mark these tasks as completed. Whenever a task is completed, all will show all of them, but the completed will show all, only the completed ones. Okay, so we need to make sure that we are displaying the task, which we are, and marking them completed. Right now, you can see that we're displaying the task right inside the to-do list screen, and that's perfectly fine, nothing wrong with that. But we can perhaps make it a little bit more interesting by simply creating a separate view. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new folder called Views. And I'm going to go ahead and say surf UI view. And I will say task list view. There we go. So we have this task list view. And this will be responsible for displaying all the tasks. In order for this to work, somebody is going to be passing all the tasks to this. So I'm going to say task item. There we go. And over here, we can pass in some sort of a task. I'm just going to pass an empty array. And now we can display the task. So we can go to our to-do list screen and copy this code and just paste it right there. OK. Now, we don't really have anything called filter task. It will be just task. And there we go. That is our task list view. So instead of using the list over here, we can simply use the task list view, pass in the actual task. The result will right now be exactly the same, but now we have moved our task list view into a different control, so if we want to use it. Now, task list view is not only displaying the name of the task, but it should also display the actual, you know, some sort of uh, image that is going to be displaying itself, meaning a check mark. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And we can probably go over here and use the add stack to create the image. And in the image, we can find out if that task is completed or not. So we'll use a system name. If the task is completed, then we will use the check check mark dot square. If it's not completed, then we will use square. Now we don't really have any task, so it's not really going to display anything right now. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and try to pass in a task ID. And we can say mow the lawn and date assigned is current date. And now we should be able to see how it looks like. Looks good. Add a little bit of a separator in the middle, a spacer in the middle, and that's how it looks like. Now, if you want, you can even separate this part out and put it in the task item view. And that is also perfectly fine if you want to do that. So let's go ahead and create another view task item view and in the task item view task item view is simply responsible for displaying a single task so i'm just going to say task item which is a task item and it's going to tell us when we have updated it so i'm just going to go ahead and create a closure called on update which will be a task item going to give you the task item. And now we need to pass it in the Xcode previews or else it's not really going to work. So let's go ahead and pass in some sort of a task item. Mow the lawn with the correct date, which is date. And for the update, well, we're not really going to do much. Just going to go ahead and pass an empty closure. And for our body over here, this is where we can kind of like copy the code from the task list view. So all of this code of the add stack and everything, we can copy that and paste it into task 
this view. Now we're calling it task item, so probably we should call it over here, task item. And over here again, task item. Okay. Now task item will be check mark when you tap on it. So let's go ahead and add a tap gesture. And what we will do is we will say var, we'll create another copy of the task item. So this will be task to update. We'll move the task item over here. We will change that so we can say task to update is completed. Whatever the initial value is, whatever the current value is, just we're just toggling it. So task item dot is completed. And we will pass in on update, passing in the task to update. And now we can start using task item view right over here inside our task list view. So task item view passing in the actual task. And on the update, we will get the updated task. Just call it updated, updated task item. And this is something that we'll have to use to persist the information. Now, right now, in the task list view, we don't have access to our model. So we can go ahead and do that. We can just add the model. Make sure you inject the model and an environment object or else your previews are not going to work. And now we can go ahead and use that. I mean, we can simply go ahead and start using our updated task item. At this moment, we don't have anything available that will update the task. So we have to go to the model and create another function which is going to update the task. We'll call it update task and edit it task. This will be of task item. It will be async and throws. Now, there are many different ways of updating the task. We can update the task just by pushing out and, uh, you know, updating the cloud kit and then wait for the response and then either fetch all the tasks or update our uh, edited task to conform to that, meaning is completed it true. Um, but we want it to be faster. So what we are going to do is we'll say, first of all, get the index of the record of the task item, basically. So we can go ahead and say over here that get from the task array, go ahead and find the index where the actual task item, the record ID is equals to the edited task.record ID. And else, if you are not able to do that, then really don't really do anything. And guard let index. So this is going to give us the index. So what we're trying to do is to quickly update the task in our task array so the user will get that kind of like an illusion that the task has been updated. But in the database, in the cloud kit, it's going to take some time. So we'll go over here into our task array. We'll pass in the index. And we'll say it's completed equals to edited task dot is completed. So we have very quickly updated the UI because task is a published property and this is going to update our task list screen UI immediately. And now we'll go to the other part. We will go ahead and use db dot record. We're going to find a particular record using the ID, so edited task dot record ID. This is going to give us a record. This is the record that we're actually trying to update in the database. Now, record uses the try weight, so we have to use that part. All right. And what else can we do? Record ID is optional. We can go ahead and unwrap it over here because it's not possible to have a edited task, meaning a task that has already been saved to the CloudKit database or iCloud database without the record ID. So this is perfectly fine to force unwrapping because it's not possible to have a task that is, well, doesn't have a record ID. And now we can go ahead and make those changes. So we can say a record. And over here, we can pass in whatever we are trying to update. So it's completed. 
equals to edited task dot is completed. And then we will save it, which is db dot save, and we will save the particular record. Now, if there is a problem with saving, then we have to kind of like revert back our all the stuff that we have done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and try all of this and catch it. If there is something wrong, right now we're just going to print it out, but eventually we're going to start handling these errors, then we will revert it or roll back, roll back the update because there's something wrong. We can't really do that. So we have to make sure that the whatever update that you were trying to do, we are rolling it back. All right, there we go. So whatever we did, we're just going to roll back. So using this approach, it's going to make sure that your task visually to the user is updated almost real time. But then it takes a little bit of more time to update it on the iCloud. And if there's a problem, then we will revert the update. Okay. Let's go back to our to-do list screen. Okay. So in the to-do list, we're doing all of that stuff. In the task list is fine. Updated task. So over here, you can see that in our task item view or task list view, we're not really doing anything. So what should we do? At this point, well, let's go ahead and remove this part for time being. On update, we're going to go ahead and call a function called update task, which we will create. The so private function update task, kind of like just a helper function, it's going to get the task item. And now we can go ahead and call model dot update task and pass in the task. But this is using try await, so we have to wrap this around. And we can't really use try await in this scenario. I mean, we have to wrap around everything with the task. And since I'm using try, I have to also catch it. Right now, we're just going to print the error over here, but this is where the error where we should should display error on the screen. So that's the important part. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and run it and see. Now, keeping in mind that when a person say check mark over here, you can see it's immediately updated in terms of the user. But if we go and check hello, that particular task in our database, it usually does take a little bit of time. Now, right now it might be updated, but if it's not going to be like real time, it might take maybe a couple of milliseconds or even a second to update. So if I go to the hello task, okay, so let's see, it's completed as one. Okay, that's fine. If I say it's completed and now I quickly reload it. Okay, so it's kind of fast, but it's not immediate. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, all right? But from the UI perspective, it's actually pretty fast. I can go ahead and check mark all of this, which will show me all of them are completed. Nothing is incomplete. Feed the cat is incomplete. And now feed the cat is over here, all right? So there you go. That's one of the ways that you can update the task. Now, in the next video, in the future videos, we're going to take a look at other stuff like error handling and all those kind of things. So, hope you like it. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, even Combine. You can see right there. And my brand new course on iOS development using UIKit. It actually also teaches you how to integrate UIKit and SIF UI uh, views together. If you're interested in augmented reality, then this is the best course available on augmented reality using Reality Kit, trust driven development, core data, and a lot more, even including my MV Design Pattern course, which is a great course of learning how to build iOS application in SIF UI framework the Apple's way. So check out this. All the links are right there in the description. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it.